Hi everyone and welcome to Diana and the Written Words. I um, wanted to start this video with a little announcement. You might have noticed if you watch my first few videos that I'm back at the original location where I filmed them and uh, I don't want to be taking over the living room which is where I am but I'm actually excited to be back because I prefer this location, I prefer how it looks and I think the light is also better. Uh, mind you, come the winter, I'm not going to have any natural light, so it won't matter anyway. But um, I'm happy to be here. And also, I have tried to prop my camera in a way that shows two new additions, um, which are a painting that my mum made. Um, it's supposed to be Ma Munganui in New Zealand, but then she took a lot of artistic allowances to it. So unless you know how the mount looks, you might not realize it but anyway um my partner spent there uh, a year a while ago and then we traveled there together so it's an important place for both of us and uh, i'm quite happy with the painting it is more like an illustration she didn't spend a lot of time with it but um i like my mom's paintings i've grown up with them so i am probably mega biased but um there it is and then I've got my parents' cats over there. Um, we now have our own cat, Billy. You might have seen him around if you follow me on Instagram. Um, but I don't have Donnie and Bissen, so I am happy to have them at least in a frame form. So today I wanted to give you my places to go when I'm looking for very cheap or free books. I made a similar video, um, a companion video if you will, that went live last Sunday and uh, so this just gives you a few more tips. The other video is about libraries in particular, it's things that you might find in your library, so I would start my list with cheap and free books with libraries. I use my library a lot and um, especially I, I use it for books that I don't know if I'm going to like or not or when I have um, or when I am looking for new books that I might otherwise not have seen. Um, the second item in my list is an online library that I keep talking about. So if you have seen other videos from this channel, you have probably heard me mention it and that is archive.org. Um, archive.org aims to have a aims to have a database of the whole of the internet. So it is going to have things like recordings and videos and interviews and leaflets even. But one of the things that it records is books as well. Um, the part of the books is also available in the open library. So if you borrow a book in the open library, it actually takes you to archive.org. I personally use archive.org directly, but I think that the open library website is easier to, to use, is more user friendly. So I would recommend probably going to that one. It essentially works as a library, so you can borrow books usually for one hour or for 14 days. Um, a few books, if they are out of copyright claims, they might be freely available without having to borrow them. And I find it especially useful to find books in foreign languages, languages other than English, that is. Um, and when I'm making comparisons between different translations, I don't want to buy the book in multiple different languages, so it is quite helpful to have this available to me. And I also use the open library for books that I only want to look at one specific thing. So I might borrow it for an hour. Um, I don't want to go to the library and take it and then have to return it if I'm only literally going to look at one paragraph. My third point of the day today is I find a lot of books in charity shops. This is kind of obvious if you live in the UK. I believe there are lots of thrift stores around the United States as well but actually I discovered this when I moved because in Spain where I'm from there aren't many second-hand shops and even fewer of them offer books so there's that 
So specifically what I do with charity shops is I get books that are maybe more popular, that are everywhere um, because they've come out a few months before um, and people just read them once and then give them away and that's exactly what I do as well unless they become new favourites of mine. So I just borrow it and, well, not borrow it, I would buy the book and then give it back to the charity shop. For my fourth point of the day, um, I am very lucky to be in a community that has a lot of ties between people and they have recently created a book swap page on Facebook. There's the main community Facebook group and then stemming from that is this book swap group. And you literally just take pictures of the books that you want to give away. And I've collected a couple books. I've collected Vicious from the Schwab that I have in the other room. So I'm not going to go and get it. I'm a very good booktuber. And um, I've got also... Actually, I am. I am going to go. So from this book swap, I've got Vicious from the Schwab. I am currently enjoying the Shades of Magic trilogy and so I am looking forward to this one. I really enjoyed what I've read so far from V. Schwab. And the other one was Isaac Asimov, which I still haven't read. And this is The Best Mysteries of Isaac Asimov and is a collection of short stories, I believe. Yeah, 31 mysterious and riddling tales in the collection. I have mentioned before, I believe, that I think a good way to get into a new author is to read short stories from that author. Mind you, not every author has the skills to give a, a good short story. But um, but anyway, I'll give this a go before I go on to other Isaac Asimov that might be more of a commitment. Um, so this book swap, it's really good because people just leave the books in their from doors and you can collect them whenever but also I feel like it creates some bonds between the community and that's a, always a good idea so um, if you don't have one around maybe you can consider creating one it really is just book swap everyone understands it and you post pictures of your books and people say if they want them and now I have a category of different ways that I find secondhand books online so I'm just going to highlight a few of the websites that I have used a lot in the past. And this is, the first one I have is Blackwells. Um, it's all around the UK. They have physical stores, but they're also available online. And it's not only secondhand, but they do have a lot of secondhand at very good prices. One thing that is interesting about Blackwells is that if you're at university and you have purchased academic books, which are very expensive, um, you can then return them to Blackwells and essentially sell them um, to, to Blackwells and they will then resell them to someone else secondhand. So it's a really great way to, to get books that would otherwise be out of anyone's budget, really. Um, the sixth place, which is also an online secondhand bookshop, is world of books and one thing i like about world of books is that you can you can order lots of things this is the case with black holes as well they have a lot of books available and um, when they when they wrap your books they wrap them in a film in a type of film plastic that is recyclable so i don't know about you but where i am we can't recycle a lot of the plastic. Uh, it's basically just milk bottles, yogurt pots, and some trays for ready meals. And that is it. But um, normally you can't recycle these very flimsy plastics. You can only recycle hard plastics. But they say in World of Books that the film that they wrap your books in is recyclable. So. I'm, I'm just glad that they're doing something about it. Um, and the seventh place that I use is Ape Books. And I use this one because it just brings together a lot of second-hand bookshops. Um, World of Books and Blackwells are included in Ape Books. So you can always compare the prices there as well. 
uh, but World of Books just puts together a lot of independent bookshop, bookshops, so it's a great way to have something delivered to your door for a good price and to support independent bookstores. So what else can you ask for? And whenever I've needed to contact them, they've also been really helpful. Um, so I would highly recommend that you check them out. I recently also had someone from Spain asking about um, books from Le Guin, um, Earthseed, Tales of Earthseed, that's the name, and um, they, couldn't, they couldn't find them for cheap. Uh, they were something crazy, it was like £200 for a book, something like that. Apparently they're very expensive in the translated Spanish version, but in the Spanish equivalent to egg books, they were there for about 30 euros or so, so, you know, it, it is a great place to find good bargains when, when there doesn't seem to be an alternative. And my eighth and last point of the day, it's actually something that I haven't tried very much, so this is also my question to you, whether you have used them or whether you're interested in using them, and that is a website that's called Voracious Readers Only. So what they aim to do is to put together authors with readers. They say that one of the most difficult things for an author is not actually to write something that's good, is to get their book out there. So if you sign up for a book, they would then send you a free ebook version of the book and then you can read it and they ask you to review it in as many platforms as possible, obviously. Um, because they're trying to get it out there, right? Um, but everything is, is free, you know, it's not a contract, it's not an obligation. And I do have one book that I got from them. Um, I'll put the title down here, Shackles and Other Tales or something like that. It's a short story collection of literary fiction and I'm looking forward to it. You'd probably see it in my next TBR. And that is all I have today, so let me know in the comments what ways you use to get very cheap or free books. And uh, I hope that this video was useful in some way. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.